Hello everybody. Hello YouTube. Hello art history enthusiasts and visual culture aficionados. It's me again, Miss M. And I'm back with yet another video. And from the picture on the screen, you could probably pretty easily figure out what I'm going to be talking about in this video. Uh, the Shining. The Shining. I'm not so much going to do a video analyzing anything or really in getting into anything in depth at this point. This video is simply to kind of announce my intention of doing a series on The Shining, kind of like I'm doing a series about the Hunter Biden exhibit. Now, I don't know. I, at this point, all I know <laughs> is that I want to do Shining videos, but I don't know how. And I don't, I know why. I know why. Because I love this movie. And I don't think I'm alone in that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I don't think I'm alone in that. I don't, I, you know what? I can't be sure. Maybe there are a lot of people who have never heard of this movie. Okay. All right. It, it's pretty much a classic at this point. A cult classic, you could say. Definitely a cult classic, if not a bona fide, certified, legitimate classic in American cinema. I'm not going to get into the story. I'm not going to get into the plot. I'm not going to get into any of the little things that I think or that I am theorizing or suspecting that Stanley Kubrick might have done when he was making this movie in order to achieve whatever it was that he was trying to achieve. No, I'm not going to do that, at least not right now. But I'm just, like I said, I'm kind of announcing my intention to do this. <clears throat> so this, what you're looking at here on the screen, is the IMDB Internet Movie Database page for this movie, which seems to be a good place to start. Like, whenever you're talking about just, just about any movie, uh, Internet Movie Database is pretty good resource for information of all kinds. And if, you know, that's not enough, then uh, there's Wikipedia. There's Wikipedia, and <clears throat> that gives you a little bit more, I, I think in a, in a way it gives you a little bit more than something like Internet Movie Database. <clears throat> but I'm going to leave both links in the description so you go ahead and look at them and you be the judge. I don't know what kind of viewers I'm going to get for these videos. Am I going to get people who already know this movie forwards and backwards and sideways and all kinds of other ways? I don't know. I simply don't know. But what I do know about this movie is that there's a lot of theories about it. There's ever so many theories about The Shining, and, you know, kind of in the same kind of direction that I was talking about in a minute ago, like, what was Stanley Kubrick trying to do? That's the big mystery. Like, what was he trying to do? Why was he trying to do it? And it's not just about storytelling, I don't think. I'm kind of big on meta-narratives lately. I think that this movie this movie, The Shining, is the ultimate meta-narrative. It's a narrative within a narrative within a... It's like a babushka doll of narratives and all kinds of stuff. And yeah, this channel is about art history enthusiasm and visual culture aficionados and people who just like art. And you might be thinking, well, this is a movie. This is not a painting or a sculpture or 
whatever. It's it's still art. And by analyzing this, it can help you analyze any other kind of work of art because he's used. I think Stanley Kubrick is using a lot of the same <clears throat> visual mechanisms or, or devices that artists have been using more or less since day one but you know i want like i said i won't get very deeply into it in this movie what i did say was there are a lot of theories some people would call them conspiracy theories some of them border on that you know that that, that can definitely be argued oh i hope i don't get into that territory but if I do, so be it. Um, there's a documentary about The Shining that kind of goes through a lot of those different theories, opinions, perspectives, interpretations, etc. It's this one, uh, Room 237. And if you watch the movie, you know what room 237 is you know what what a big role that room plays in the movie um and you'll understand right away why the people who did this documentary named it room 237 so i'm leaving that here and i'll put this in the description of the video if you want to look into it, <clears throat> sorry, I've got a frog in my throat today, uh, but the, I'll put this uh, Internet Movie Database link, and I'll put the Wikipedia for Room 237, and I wanted, I, I when I was preparing to like get going and do this video, I was poking around on the search, and I found this uh, Reddit, Stanley Kubrick, the best Stanley Kubrick community on the Internet, at least that's what they claim, and I guess this is their, <laughs> this, I, I, ooh, I didn't see this right away, but um, this is their n members, the, the number of people who are <laughs> uh, members of this community here on Reddit, uh, 37.8 thousand droogs, mm, okay, and 26 of them are in the gold room, good heavens. Now, the reason I found this thing is because I was looking for this here. I was looking for the Shown Report, which was a series of videos. If you're a Stanley Kubrick or a Shining aficionado, you've heard of the Shown Report. And I couldn't find a good enough like link to put in the description of this video. So I settled on just this Reddit here. Um, because it does mention the Schoen report, and a lot of people aren't taking it seriously for whatever reason. Um, okay, I'm not going to comment on that or or say anything definitively about that, because I don't know. But what this did remind me of is there's a lot of people who are kind of well-known. They have their own little... I, I, I guess I could even call it like a celebrity status as far as shining or Kubrick researchers. Rob Ager is one. He's pretty good. He's really pretty good. And I've, I've watched many of his videos, if not all of them. Well, I shouldn't say all of them. A lot of them. A lot of them concerning The Shining and other Kubrick movies. And they're very good. And I do suggest that you seek him out, his YouTube channel or his website or, or what have you. And then there's also this guy that's mentioned here, Jay Wiedner who made some movies about Stanley Kubrick and Stanley Kubrick's... Sorry, a couple of Stanley Kubrick's movies. One of them was, I think, included mentions and analyses of The Shining, but also of uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Uh, they're both worth checking out, in my opinion. The Shown Report, definitely worth checking out. Doesn't matter whether or not you agree with it, but information is information uh, arguments opinions what have you it's good to hear what everybody thinks and not just kind of get stuck um, in your own kind of 
pattern of thinking, even if it sounds crazy, even if it's if it seems like, no, that couldn't possibly be what's going on. I believe check it out anyway, because you never know what you might learn in the process, even if it turns out to be totally something that shouldn't be taken seriously whatsoever. It's still a learning experience, and it's worth it just for that reason alone. So yeah, go ahead and look for the Sean Report. L try to find uh, Rob Ager's stuff, Jay Wiedner's stuff. Like I said, Room 237. Uh, I might I might even be talking about these various sources and, and things in my videos just because I like to consider all perspectives, not just my own or not just one source or, or what have you. But so I'm going to put a link to this in my description for this video too. My next one that I want to discuss here, this is this is a cute website that I just found tonight, Film Grab, and what they do, apparently, is they just have film stills of various movies, like pretty good looking film stills, and I, I picked a few that, you know, are good good to use as an intro to this video series that I'm planning on doing. This is the first one I picked, and I the ones that I did pick out of these, I put them all in chronological order based on my memory of the movie, so I've watched it quite a few times. Um, I've watched The Shining quite a few times, and, you know, I, I don't know if I have OCD, or I'm just a little weird. Or, you know, no, I'm not saying people with OCD are weird. No, 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 no. But there's there's something about that movie that brings out those kind of thinking patterns in people like me. So there, I'll leave it at that. I, I won't go any further. But this is one of the first shots in the movie. These mountains, hills, water, this little island in the middle of everything. Very, very isolated, but still a part of everything. But um, there's that. Then there's this. This comes next. Well, not right after the no. But you see this in the beginning of the movie with that spooky music. And then this is also in the earlier part of the mu movie, Jack's job interview with uh, this individual in this office with this window. Uh, at the hotel, okay? I'll talk about that in later videos. I, again, I don't even know how I'm going to organize these things. But then there's this, and I put it here because I think it's extremely important. This is one of these shots or scenes in the movie that's very often overlooked. And I can't, you know, by all these analysts and researchers and film people and hobbyists and whatever. They talk about all kinds of stuff, but they don't. <clears throat> as far as I know, maybe I need to do more research myself and find more sources, but they don't seem to go to any trouble to really figure out or, or put any significance on this particular scene or this particular room. In room 237, they discuss this poster back here. I think it was this poster. Was it this poster or this poster? I'm not sure. It's been a while since I've watched it, but I will try to discuss it more in depth. So hold me to it if I forget to do that. Then there's this. There's the exterior shot of the hotel. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. So much to say, but I won't say it now. Oof. So much to say, so much to think about. It's, it always gets me how the building seems to be a mirror of this mountaintop. I'll just call it a mountaintop because I'm not sure, but this mountaintop behind it. Mm. What's going on? I want to know what's going on. I'm, I, oof. Then there's this thing. Oh, this thing. Really, really interesting. <clears throat> this is yellow paper. Or it looks, at least it looks yellow to me, like, like a very pale shade of yellow, but yellow nonetheless. And color is an important part here. I'll talk about it in my other videos. Oh, there he is. 
Mm. I knew I put that there, but I forgot. And then when I clicked over to the tab, it's it's startled me. So here he here is here is Johnny. Um <laughs> with those eyebrows and that smile of his that is iconic. This man's face should be revered. Nobody has one quite like it. So, but this is an extremely important part of the movie. What am I saying? I keep saying the same thing over and over again. Every single second of every single minute of this movie is extremely important. But there are parts that stand out more than the others, and this is one of them. This this iconic, iconic shot of him laughing maniacally, um, looking straight at the camera. But again, I'll discuss it in my other videos. And then there's this as well. <clears throat> this axe, this door, this door frame. Everything about this is just way too much, but just perfect in its own way. And of course, of course, I couldn't forget this. Again, with, with you know, this grill of his, my God. Uh, and the eyebrows, that's that's what I always remember about his face. The, the mouth, the teeth, and the eyebrows. It, oh, he, they cast him perfectly for this. Let me just put it that way. Um, and that's that. That's my intro to my future Shining series that I still don't know how I'm going to organize. Heaven help me. But, so, you know, if you're interested, stay tuned for that. I'm going to be coming back with videos about that. And to end this one, okay, I think I'm going to make it a little shorter than my usual videos. But this, this, I found this when I was doing my searches to prepare for this. And I thought this was just the most darling thing ever. And I'll link to it in the description if any of you are interested. Room 237, the book written <laughs> in The Shining um, paperback by, <laughs> yeah, Jack Torrance. Uh, paperback is $9.99. Kindle is, oh, free. Um, <laughs> I wonder why. But... <clears throat> And it's not for the usual, I don't think it's for the usual reason why Kindle book is free. Um, if you, if you read, I'll go ahead and scroll down to the reviews. It's just too much. This one, <laughs> as a lover of the cubic film, The Shining, I was overjoyed when I saw this book. My mind was racing with all the horrifying events, but I was gravely mistaken. All work and no play. Next, Jack a dull boy. This sentence is repeated over and over <laughs> on every single page except the last page. If you are a fan of The Shining and just want this book as a novelty, then by all means purchase it. To me, it was a waste of time and money. Why would I want to read the same line on all the pages except the last? I have mentioned the last page. The good news is that you will not find this line on the last page, the bad news is you will find one, yes, one sentence, out of the whole book that is different. Is it a shocker? Not to me. One sentence that is different. Is it really worth buying the book for that one sentence? Which is no world changer? The book is worth zero stars, in my opinion. <laughs> but that is not one of the options. And I guess one person found this review helpful. It probably helped them decide to buy this book. I think I might do that too, um, but you know, I, if you're a Shining enthusiast, d doesn't this just sound like an awesome thing to have? Um, and, the, and on that note, I will go ahead and wrap it up. I'm going to go ahead and say if you like this video or any of my others, uh, or if you'd like to see more, please don't forget to subscribe. Uh, if you liked it, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, let me know in the comments because I can use all the constructive criticism that you got for me just as long as you're not beastly. That's, that's all I request. Um, so until next time, I don't know what kind of video I'm going to do next time, but it'll be something. Uh, I am 
so excited about continuing my Hunter Biden series and beginning my Shining series, no matter what form it takes. So until then, uh, I will talk at you guys later. And until then, thank you for watching, and I will bid you bye-bye. So, bye-bye, everybody.